Jalen Brown got paid five years, three hundred four million. Justin Herbert got paid five years, two hundred sixty two million. Highest paid NBA contract in history. The highest paid NFL contract in history. All on the same day. And the first thing I thought when I saw that Justin Herbert's getting five years for two hundred sixty million, I said, "Joe Burrow, come on down. What do you want, Joe?" He knows that that's the minimum right now. That's the starting point because he's more accomplished. He's been to a Super Bowl. and But they're the Bengals. It's always tricky with the Bengals. <laughs> oh, always, no. always. It's not one of those where you go, oh, okay, yeah, yeah, you got to pay him that. I mean, you do have to pay him that. And the good news for the Bengals is, in my opinion, you are going to spend that money and you know he's worth it. Like, if I'm a Cowboys fan and you paid Dak Prescott, I don't know if he's worth that. Or the Vikings with Kirk Cousins, the Cardinals, Kyler Murray. That's, that's when you're in quarterback purgatory. The Giants with Danny Dimes where you go, God, do we have to pay him? You know, the Chargers are like, ah, we got to pay him. Yeah, I agree. I want to pay Joe Burrow. And I also thought at the time – when Patrick Mahomes signed that deal, and I came in that next day and I said, Chiefs got a, a bargain. They got a bargain. It's like when Bryce Harper signed with Philadelphia. I said, Philly got a bargain. In the moment, you're going, oh, my God, they're paying him a half a million dollars, or half a billion dollars. And I go, yeah, and he'll be a bargain. It didn't take long for him to become a bargain. And I'm sure that uh, you know Justin Herbert or Joe Burrow will be a bargain in a couple of years. Now, if I'm an Eagles fan, I had to pay that money to Jalen Hurts. I'd like to have waited one more year, just like I said to the Cardinals. Wait another year with Kyler Murray. Oh, he's going to sit out? Let him sit out. Because now you're dealing with five years with that kind of money, and that changes your franchise here. But having a quarterback you know is worth it, boy, that's a relief. It's when you're going, I got to pay this. Like the Celtics, Jalen Brown. Good player. He's been all NBA, not even first team, once. He's the highest paid player in the game. I don't want to have two guys who do the same thing. Jalen Brown and Jason Tatum, it doesn't make sense to me. And I know I've been told, uh, you know, by people, uh, you got to pay him. You got to keep him. No, you don't. You don't have to. I wouldn't have. I would have tried to work something out there. But now I still have two guys who, all right, you can get me 27 a night. And, uh, you know, you can shoot the three. Neither can handle the ball. Like, it's weird to have, a, a, you know, a contract where you go, uh, yeah, going to pay him this. You know, but he's got to work on some things. You would think when you get to that point where, like Jokic. I mean, Jokic signed for, what, $30 million less than Jalen Brown. I don't know if he needs to work on anything. Jalen Brown... You know, he's got to work on his handle. No kidding. So you got a guy who was not good in the playoffs, and everybody's getting you 20, at least 20 points a night. That's not a big deal anymore. If you don't have, get 20, you're not, a very, you're not a scorer. So Jalen Brown will give you points and rebounds and assists, and that's all wonderful. I just don't want a team that feels like they're built for the regular season. I want a team that knows when we get to the playoffs – now you, you're going to have your hands full. And, you know, they traded away Marcus Smart. You got Kristaps Porzingis. So I got another real tall perimeter guy. <laughs> okay. We lead the league in perimeter guys. I just don't know if, if they're the team to beat or they're that much more formidable. Wonderful talent, but I don't want the same player. And that's what I have with Tatum and Brown. Yes, Marv. And Jalen Brown had an opportunity to step up in Game 7 when Tatum got hurt, yeah. and he disappeared completely. Oof. Oof. But here are the Celtics banging on the doors for a title the last couple of years, and they remain aggressive. You got Porzingis. Um, you know, Brown has been valuable, shot over 49% from the floor, average 26 per game. So you got Tatum and Porzingis. Um, it just feels clunky. Maybe that's the right word. But, uh, you know, Brown in the postseason averaging 18 points in 105 playoff games. <laughs> I know he's only 26. That's what they keep telling me about Jason Tatum. And I say, he's got to learn how to handle the ball in traffic. 
He's he's the Hall of Very Good. Absolutely. But you get to the postseason. Your flaws come out. They're exacerbated. I, I would have looked at changing the complexion of my team. If I've got Porzingis, do I need Jalen Brown? And at that price, too. Yes, Mark. Would you have tried Jalen Brown for Dame Lillard? Yes. Like, if your goal is to win a title, then look at it, you know, these next... Porzingis is there for two more years, so you're looking at a two-year window here. It, it goes back to everybody talking about Shohei Otani. And you're going, well, what are the Angels going to do? Team's going to trade for him. Now, let's factor in a couple of things here. And it's wishful reporting. I'm guilty of it. Where you go, man, it'd be great if he got traded, or at least the possibility he got traded. Well, are the Angels, who are on the periphery of a wild card spot, going to trade Otani to a team, and then they're going to get prospects. Therefore, they're not going to be competitive to try to make the playoffs this year. And you have Mike Trout, so they're not rebuilding. you got a GM who I think is in the last year of his contract, maybe has one more year left. Is he going to be like, yeah, let's, let's blow this. You can't blow it up with Mike Trout. If you're a team that would be interested in Shohei Otani, are you going to go... Here's our farm system. And you don't even know if he's going to resign. Or, hey, why don't we just wait until he's a free agent? Then we don't have to give up anybody. So if you factor in logic, which we don't like to do in the media, then you go, is Shohei Otani going to be traded? And, and if you're going to pull off a trade, is he going to resign with Baltimore or Arizona, Seattle, San Francisco, the Dodgers? I don't know. It feels like his agent wants to go to free agency. Why would I give up everything for a guy who still wants to go to free agency? We're, it's wishful. It, go back to Odell Beckham Jr. the third. It was wishful reporting. Oh, my God, the Cowboys. The Cowboys. He's going to go to the Cowboys. If he goes to the Cowboys, and I know I keep banging the drum on this, I was the lone person in the media who said, can he even play? And that's when Odell Beckham responded to the show by calling me an outsider. Yeah, I'm a buzzkill because I wanted to know if he could play. And it turned out he couldn't play. But we wanted him to play. And we wanted him to play for the Cowboys. Do we want Otani to be traded? We want him in a Dodger uniform. We want him with the Yankees. Okay. Just apply logic to this. And if you apply logic to this, I don't see him moving. I just don't. 